Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are on the last video of this four part series where I am giving you action step ideas for a number of goal categories. And today we are talking about the home physical space category. Again, these first four categories that I've done these videos on were recommendations or requests from my Patreon goal setting community and the categories that they struggle with the most. If there is a category that I did not cover in this series that you would find a video like this helpful for, please comment below with what that category would be. But let's get into it. Just like all of our other videos, we are going to kick it off with some ideas, then go into questions to ask yourself, book recommendations, and then a general goal idea tip at the end. So if you didn't watch the first three videos, because maybe those goal categories that don't apply to you, I would highly recommend clicking on it and just skipping to the end. You can always click on the timestamps and jump to the end where I give a general goal idea tip that could help you with any goal category that you're struggling with. So let's get into it with ideas. I do feel like for this category, the ideas are really going to stem from your specific living space and what it needs. We'll talk about that more when we get to the question. So these 10 ideas are something you may or may not be able to apply to your space, but might just get some ideas rolling for you. So the first one is to clean one shelf or one drawer. Make an action step so small that it is just to do one drawer or one shelf. What is a drawer that you look at or a shelf you look at every day that you're like, that needs a little bit of love. The next idea is to buy something new that makes your home smell awesome. Someone came into my apartment about a month ago and walked in and goes, it smells like anthropology in here. It was the biggest compliment I could have ever gotten. Whether it's a candle or a wall plug-in, fresh flowers, whatever it is that you love that makes your house or apartment smell delicious, go buy a fresh scent or make sure to use that product that you already have. The next idea is just spend some time on Pinterest looking for some new ideas. Sometimes just getting re-excited about what you could do with your space by seeing someone else's space can be really helpful. And while yes, there are definitely homes and pictures on Pinterest that are just never going to look like that, like no nobody's house is that perfect all the time. There could be one thing that you see that you're like, oh, I never thought about rearranging my room this way, or I never thought about putting that next to that, or this color with that color. And it might just inspire you to do something slightly different in whatever space it is that you're trying to focus on. The next idea is to just fill up one box or bag to take to donate. Whether that's Goodwill, Salvation Army, wherever you typically donate things, don't worry about doing your entire house or entire apartment. That's a lot of pressure. Take one small box or one like small grocery bag, go around your space and fill that up. And when that's full, take that immediately or as immediate as possible to get donated. I know I have been guilty of filling up a box or a bag and then letting it sit by the door for a month and being like, we really need to take this to Goodwill. Take it as quickly as you possibly can, but don't worry. The key here, the action step tip here is not to worry about doing your entire house or even an entire room. It's to fill up one small container of stuff and then get rid of that stuff. The next idea here is to brainstorm a cleaning plan. And I am being careful with my word choice about brainstorming because there's two things I've learned with a cleaning plan. Number one, you cannot implement it all at once. As much as I would like to think that I can craft this perfect plan and then implement it all at once and I'm going to stick with it forever, never, never works, never happens. The other piece here is that you might change your mind once you start doing it. We talked about that a few videos ago where action will create more ideas. Action will also create different ideas or you'll realize that this cleaning plan that you brainstormed or mapped out does not quite fit within your life and you tweak it a little bit, but just start with a brainstorm. Another random idea, but one that I think can make a huge difference in, in the feeling of a space is updating the pictures. When was the last time you got some new pictures printed for those frames in your living room. I have lots of pictures in our apartment. I love, love pictures, but some of those pictures have been there for a very long time and it doesn't take that long at all for me to pick out some new ones, send them to Walgreens and go pick them up. The next idea is to just pick one spot to deep clean. So kind of like the drawer shelf recommendation from earlier, but I mean, Lean. Like you're gonna get all the little dust out of those corners or you're gonna like really take everything off of some space and wipe every little individual thing down. Not your entire house, but what is one area that it has been a long time since you even thought about touching? Another kind of upgrade thing similar to the pictures are light bulbs. There are some times that I, and by sometimes I mean all the time, where I wait to change the light bulb until it went out. But how frustrating is it when you are in that in-between phase? Literally right now, our bedroom, it's like it's a dome light and there are two light bulbs and one is out and one is not. And I'm like, do I really wanna deal with like climbing on the bed and having to do all of that for just one of the light bulbs? No, I don't, but it frustrates me every time I'm in that room and it feels dark. So I know it would make me much happier, especially a room I spend time in every day 
to go through that effort to switch out the light bulb. So whether it is half the light bulbs are out or it's just dim and maybe brightening it up with a brand new light bulb would make a big difference. Is there one light bulb in your house or apartment that you could swap out today? The last two ideas are pulling in other people. I think sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, to, to do it all and to do everything in our home by ourselves. So the first one is to pull in the people that you live with. Ask them what they want. Ask them what rooms they feel like could use a little sprucing. Ask them their thoughts on cleaning this one area or can we do this together? I know that, again, trying to take it all on yourself because no one's gonna do it quite like you, it can be really difficult, but sometimes just getting some additional ideas or help can be really beneficial. And the last one is whether you live alone or with other people, ask a friend to come over and help you with that decluttering process. I am always this person for my stepmom. Pretty much every time I'm at home, we spend at least an hour in her closet going through stuff. Do we make it through the entire closet every time? No, M most of the times we don't, but we always spend some time in there because she knows that I'm gonna give her a little bit of tough love on things that she, it, like, it doesn't need to be in her closet anymore. There are things that she doesn't wear, things that are out of style, things that don't fit her properly anymore, that it's time. It's just time to pass it on. So who could that friend be for you? And maybe it's clothing, maybe it's art supplies, it could be any number of things, but invite someone over to really be that tough love for you and help you go through one area of your home that you're really struggling to go through. All right, let's move into the questions to ask yourself to really give you some ideas to help you think of things that would be specific to your home and your space. The first one is, what area do I spend the most time in? If you're struggling to figure out what to focus on when it comes to your house or apartment, asking yourself where you spend the most time, that's a really great place to start. The next question could have the same answer, could be different, but what area stresses me out the most? Whenever I have to go to this one space, whether that's a closet or a room or an area, whatever it is in your house or apartment that stresses you out to go there or even to think about going there, that is a really great place to start in terms of upgrades, decluttering, cleaning, whatever it is that that space needs. Going back to our cleaning plan action idea, one question related to this that could be beneficial is, what is the minimum that would make me feel happy and comfortable in our space every day? That minimum is first off going to be different for all of us. We all have a different degree of like, I feel good going to bed when my house is in this state. That said, that minimum can change over time. There might be times in your life that you can do a lot you have a lot of energy before bed. Then there might be a time a couple years later where you have two little ones and that minimum suddenly changed. So try not to have the same expectations for yourself for a minimum that you used to have that might not be that way anymore. So asking yourself, okay, what is the minimum that makes me feel good before I go to bed? But then I wanna remind you that there are gonna be days that you don't have the energy to even do that. And I've given this example before, but having a couple of options. So having like, this would be my ideal, right? This is that middle of the road, that average energy, that average me. This is, this is what I would like. But really, here's the minimum. Here's the bare minimum. And then here's like, if I was in the, a superhero state, is what I call it, superhero version of me. And when I talk about this type of goal for me, right, the bare minimum is that I cleaned off my desk. That way my desk is ready to go first thing in the morning. The average me and what I try to do and do most days, 70% of the time, 70, 80% is the office, making sure the office is in good shape. When I'm a superhero version of me, it's the whole apartment. Everything looks good before bed. That happens like maybe twice a month. The next question to ask yourself is, what room could use some new decor? And it doesn't have to be incredibly expensive super fancy brand new shiny things. It could be as simple or as inexpensive as going to Goodwill and picking out one brand new picture frame. But what room in your house, space, apartment have you not bought something new for in a really long time? And then the last question to ask yourself is, what do I struggle to put away because the items don't fit in the space? And this is a little bit of a spoiler from the, one of the book, I have two book recommendations for this topic, is the space rule. How many of us, I am, I am us, when, when all of the clothes are clean, when you have done all of the laundry, you know, once in a blue moon, it all doesn't fit in the, in the drawer or in, in the closet. If that is the case, then we need to do something about that. That can't, like, that can't be the norm. So we either need to get rid of some of the items or get a bigger space. And I learned about this in the book, Decluttering at the Speed of Life. If decluttering is part of your home goal, I cannot recommend this book more. One of the things that I think is kind of messed up our thinking in terms of decluttering and cleaning in general is that we need to take everything out 
organize, clean, piles, declutter, and then put everything back in. And maybe we just all watch too much Marie Kondo, but most of us don't have the space or the time to declutter that way. And that is why this book is so beneficial. She talks about how to declutter while going about your day-to-day -day life, spending five minutes on an area. What are the steps by room, by item? How do you declutter without having to give up your entire Saturday and put all of your clothes that you own on the bed. And in that book, she talks about what she calls the container rule, which is what I was talking about, where all the clothes don't fit in the space, right? That's the container. I have the closet, the dresser, and if when everything is clean, it doesn't fit, then, that, then it doesn't work. I either need to get a bigger container or get rid of some of the stuff. The other book I want to recommend on this topic is called The Cozy Minimalist Home. This book leans more if what you are working on in this goal is more decor. If what you're focusing on is making your house feel a certain way. You're like, I've already gotten rid of all the stuff, I, I, or I just moved, I don't really, I'm not worried about decl like decluttering, I don't need to get rid of things. I just need to feel a different way about my space. Highly recommend this book. She gives a lot of really great design tips that I had never thought of before, like the fact that what's opposite of a mirror you should enjoy looking at because a mirror is basically a picture frame for whatever is on the other side of that mirror. And I think back to all the years where my parents put a, and she talks about this in the book, a mirror on top of the mantle and all it reflected was like the landing at the top of the stairs. Like who, who wants to look at that? And of course I read this book after I'd already hung a mirror in our apartment that's opposite our electrical box. So I, a little bit of a fail there, but if decor and setting up a space is important to you as it relates to this goal, then I highly recommend that book. And this week's general idea tip to get ideas for action steps for specific goals is to look at other people's ideas. I talk about this in when I talk about my own goals to take everybody else's goal action steps with a grain of salt, right? You don't know what their specific goal is, what their life is like, what their support system is like. And so you can't look and see somebody has a daily goal of decluttering an hour a day and think, oh, I, I'm a failure if I don't declutter an hour a day. But what you can do is you can see other people's action steps and adjust them to make them work for you. And this can be done in a lot of different ways. Social media is obviously a really great way to get ideas for other people's goals. Go look at pictures that have the power sheets or Moxie Life tagged in them. Follow people that share their goals regularly. Join Facebook groups. That's another great place in both the Moxie Life and the Cold Food Matters Facebook groups. People are always sharing pictures of their goal action step ideas. And then the last place is the Patreon community. If you're looking for a smaller, more goal focused community where we have people working on pretty much any type of goal that you could think of, and we are always sharing goal action ideas in our Facebook group, come join us over on Patreon. I will leave the link down below. And if you have any questions about how it works or maybe what tier would work best for you, send me a DM on Instagram, plan with Lakin, and let's chat about it and figure out what system, what level of accountability you need to work on your goals. And that is going to be the end of the series. I hope that you found it helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday focused on helping you achieve your goals. Thank you so much for watching. So I know it would make me much happier, especially a room I spend in time, spend in time every day. And it doesn't, it could be a work for, and even,